What's up, everyone, and welcome back to Movie Raise. If you're tired of waiting for The Kissing Booth 3 to come out, and by the way, thank you for that, Netflix, why not catch up on some movies? If teenage flicks are your thing, then we have the most popular picks. And number one is pretty much the same movie, if there were no Elle and Noah. So here are the 10 movies you should watch if you like The Kissing Booth. And with that, let's dive right in, folks. Number 10, Dumplin'. I don't know how I'm gonna survive my mom's pageant season. She already started her diet. Oh, right? Dumplin'. If you loved Elle on The Kissing Booth, then you sure as hell love goofy and unconventional characters that don't like to follow the rules or care what anyone else thinks of them. This is where Dumplin' comes in. The movie features Jennifer Aniston and Danielle McDonald. So now that we had some of the basics covered, let's talk a little about the story. As you can see from the trailer, Danielle plays Will, a chubby girl whose mother is Rosie Dix, played by Jennifer Aniston. And unlike her daughter, she is fit, ambitious, and neglects her daughter because of her career as a pageant judge. And in the process, she's smashing that like button if you haven't done so already. Her daughter is finally liberated from the societal pressure, and she decides to compete in the pageant where her mother works. This is an act of defiance, but an empowering one too, because she is no longer constricted by the shackles of society. Number 9. The Half of It I guess I just never thought I'd need anyone else. Hey, hold up! As we said before, Elle is different to say the least. She's not like her average girl, and that's why Ellie, the main character in this movie, is not like other girls too. She even says so herself in the movie. But if you look at the poster for this film, you will notice that this 2020 coming-of-age love story is actually pretty unusual. So what happens in the movie? Well, first of all, you have the brave Ellie who writes essays for her fellow classmates in order to pay for her education and living expenses. So that's how she and Paul met. Um, Paul is the guy that wanted Ellie to fall in love with Aster, and that's where the unusual part comes in. If this was like your usual love story, you'd have the guy fall in love with the girl and that would be it. Here you have the opposite. Ellie and Paul don't fall in love. So that means Paul and Aster fall in love, right? Wrong again. You see, there's a secret connection that can be spotted in the trailer. Let's see if you can find it. Number 8. The Perfect Date You're getting paid to take a girl on a date. Did you know that Michelle Obama got paid to go on a date with Barack? And look how great that's her. What happens when you're young, ambitious, and you want to have it all, but your social and financial situation don't allow it? You do what Brooks did. He did everything for money, even pretending to be something that he is not. This all started when he agreed to take Celia to her prom for money. He got the girl, got the money, and as a bonus, he got to ride the fanciest car to get there. And Celia was the girl that suggested he make a living out of this. So he would chaperone girls to their prom or party, dress up and be anyone the client wanted, and be rewarded for it in the end. He did all of this for his high goal of going to Yale. But his dream didn't really work out. In the process of doing so, he changed. He became egotistic and self-centered, forgetting about his father and his best friend in the process. In the end, instead of going with the popular girl Shelby, he decided to dump her and choose the one that understood him. Number 7. Sierra Burgess is a loser. Stanford. Yes, I almost got a perfect score on my SATs. You're a good student, but Sierra, what's your set? Excuse me? Sierra Burgess. If you like to see the outcast become the hero of the story, this one is a must-watch. As the title suggests, Sierra Burgess is a pretty big loser in the school. She's pretty much invisible for anyone there. She's not as attractive as the other girls, but we keep forgetting that a person's beauty comes from the inside. So what does Sierra do? She manages to get the hottest guys to fall in love with her just by texting him and talking to him on the phone. At first, she pretends to be some other girl just to get Jamie's attention, but once she has it, he becomes madly in love with her. But this is all while Jamie thinks Sierra is Veronica, the most popular girl in school. To know how Jamie reacts to Sierra telling him the truth, you will have to watch the movie. We don't want to give too much away. Number six, to all the boys I loved before. There are five total. Peter, the most popular guy in school. Kenny from camp. Lucas from homecoming. 
Strange things happen to teenagers, at least that's what this movie shows us. If you'd like to see what happens when the intimate love letters Lana Jean has been writing finally get sent to all of her five crushes, then boy are you in for a treat. Again, imagine having all those intimate love letters where you wrote some crazy stuff about the people you love, and then everyone knows about them, even your sister's boyfriend, whom you've had a crush on since you were little. So what does Lara Jean do? She makes one of her crushes her boyfriend, to make her sister's boyfriend think that the letter he received was fake. But this too blew up in her face, at least for the time being. Number five, a walk to remember. Thank you. She was misunderstood. <laughs> so what's your deal? I don't care what people This one is an oldie but a goodie. Most of you might have already watched it, but we couldn't pass along on this classic. A Walk to Remember features Jamie Sullivan and Landon Carter. The first one is a good girl that doesn't really care about what people think. The second one, a bad boy with high interest and in a social image and status. But as they say, opposites do attract. So Jamie and Landon start secretly seeing each other. Now this is good for the moment, but when Jamie goes to talk to Landon in front of his friends, he dismisses her like yesterday's news. This means war. Jamie returns the favor, and when he goes to her house to ask her out on another date, she slams the door in his face. Thus begins their little tale of push and pull. Number four, work it. Let's just start off by saying Sabrina Carpenter killed her role. Now, this is a particularly new movie, and we think it's going to become a classic. When Quinn Ackerman goes to talk to the progressive admissions counselor, she realizes that she would need extracurricular activities if she wanted to get into Duke University. She decides to join the dance club in her school and win the pageant, but there's just one teeny little problem. Quinn can't dance. Since the team doesn't want to lose the competition because of her, she assembles her own team, finds the people, and even gets a choreography coach. And this is where things start to get interesting. There's dancing, there's romance, and there's comedy. What more could you ask for? Number three, Summer 03. Remember much about Summer? So you're gonna lose your mouth virginity too. What do you mean? Her dying wish. If you like Joey King, then the perfect movie to watch would be another romantic teenage drama where she has the leading role. The kissing booth was one thing, but this is a bit different. It has quite a bit of perversion in it, since her grandma gave Jamie, her granddaughter, some pretty nasty advice on her deathbed. Ever since she died, Jamie has been acting weird. She's been trying to lose her virginity until she met Luke, a teenager who's Catholic and therefore completely changes Jamie and her poor life decisions. To watch, definitely. Number two, after. Harden, Scott. I think that it's better if we keep our distance. We couldn't go through this list without mentioning one of the most iconic teenage dramas. We've talked about it a ton on this channel, and if you still haven't watched it, you're missing out. After all, a low-budget movie that managed to reel in about 70 million at the box office means it's not too shabby. Now, as for the storyline, it feels a little weird talking about it again, but here goes. A short overview of what to expect. A goody two-shoes girl, Tessa goes off to college. There she meets one of the handsomest guys with a ton of tattoos and a bad boy attitude. His name is Harden. When their two worlds collide, their lives are going to be changed forever. And because of their personality differences, both of them end up hurt pretty badly at the end of it. Now, if you're ready to cry a lot at the end of this movie, then we suggest you add it on your list. Number one, Naomi and Ellie's No Kiss List. Eli and I are city kids who never had big backyards, but we'll always have each other. Some friendships are now, this movie is pretty much the same as The Kissing Booth, but instead of two straight friends, you have a girl and her gay best friend. Much like The Kissing Booth, these two create a no-kiss list in which they add the names of people they are not allowed to kiss or sleep with. But you know that rules were made to be broken, right? Well, that turns out to be true for this movie too. So Naomi and Ellie end up battling to keep their friendship after both of them broke the pact. And you know there's going to be some turbulence when they try to quote, unquote, work things out. Again, we chose this movie because it's just like the kissing booth. And on that note, we end this video. 
But hey, which one of these movies made it to your to watch list? You can tell us in the comment section below. If you like more videos like these, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you never miss any of them. And as always, thanks for watching, guys.